Hi, we're going to learn this afternoon how to time your APQS quilting machine. The timing instructions that we're going over today are going to apply for all of the APQS machines, one slight variation being the Ultimate 2 machine, and we'll go over those differences a little bit later. To make it easier for us to see the timing procedure today, we have taken the front two rollers off the table. Make it easier for the video camera to get in close shots it'll make things easier for you to see the timing on your machine as well. The only time that you're going to need to be timing your machine is if you have a needle break or a needle jam with the machine. Our APQS machines being belt driven are not just going to go out of time on their own. What we're going to do with the instructions and the video that we're showing you now is to break down the timing process into smaller chunks so it's easier to understand and it makes things much less stressful for you. The machine that I'm using for the timing video today is an older style Millennium. This machine was built in about 2006. So it may look a little bit different than the machine that you're working on. However, the overall timing process is going to be the same. Except for the Ultimate 2, as I mentioned earlier, We'll go over those differences a little bit later. What we're going to do first is go over the tools that you need to do the timing process. It's very helpful to have all the tools right at hand when you're doing the timing process because once you get into the process, you don't want to have to stop in the middle and go run and find another tool. The first thing that I'm going to show you is a flat blade screwdriver. This is used for adjusting your needle bar height. Um, the access holes for the needle bar clamping screw in the machines are fairly small holes, so the tip of the screwdriver needs to be fairly narrow. Some businesses call this a cabinet tip screwdriver, where the tip width is 3 8 of an inch or less. Nice long handle is very important because you can get more torque on your screws and make sure that these adjustments that we're making right now are not going to fall out on their own definitely not something you want to have to start all over with. The next tool is a little bit shorter flat blade screwdriver. My shank length here is about four inches, total length about six inches. Um, this is very handy for putting in your needle bar screw. A lot of us want to use real tiny flat blade screwdrivers, but again the same thing comes into play here with the length of the screwdriver. You're going to get that screw much more tight using a longer handled screwdriver than you will with a short one. You will also need a Phillips screwdriver. Fairly short because you don't have a lot of distance here between your needle plate and your light on the machines. This is used for getting the Phillips screws out for your needle plate um, and also your thread cutter plate if we need to do any adjustments on that. Important part here is to make sure that the Phillips tip is a number two Phillips tip. That is used for all the cover screws on the machine along with your needle plate and thread cutter screws. Another tool that we'll need to have is a flat file. This is a fairly long flat file. A lot of times you can go to the hardware stores and get a shorter version of this. Um, this is what we're using to sand the shaft down on the machine to make the timing process much easier. It's better to use a handled file like this, a nice sturdy one to do the filing on the shaft. Um, emery cloth or sandpaper is commonly thought of the easiest thing to use, however you have to be really careful that we're not going to round over the shaft that the hook assembly sits on. That makes the timing process a huge headache. The final thing that we need to have is some sort of a magnifier. And we have this little jeweler's eye loop here. This is five times magnified. Very nice thing about this is it's super lightweight and it's very handy to get right down and look at your needle bar. When you're doing the timing, you have to be right there and very close to see exactly how close your needle bar and your hook are to each other that important. Several variations of these magnifiers that you can find. Um, look at your local hardware store and see what you can find there for a magnifier. That about covers the tools that you need to do the timing. Next step is to actually get into the timing process.